that's uh, for basic testing of an autom autonomous driving system for formula student we don't need much we don't need much more than a flat track with cones on either side defining the truck limits so i've thought about ways to quickly position lanes of cones equal distance from each other and with experience in vector graphics the uh, following solution has emerged uh, with example files and text explanation you can find in a github repository in the description of the video so first we need to obtain an image of our track uh, for this a satellite image is, is preferred as it is the closest thing we can have to to an orthographic view uh, of the track which is much better than a perspective image like from a drone photo so I'll open Google Maps on uh, a place I'm interested in and have a screenshot of the area that I'm interested in, interested in. Mm, like this okay mm, now I'll copy it and we will use it this image in Inkscape to create our cone track. So first thing we will need is to determine the track width and for this I found some information on the internet how to how uh, wide the track is uh, in, in, in this circle in this part and to match uh, the width of the track to the values that will be exported uh, we will use uh, this width, which is 8 meters, as a pixel value. So we need this width to be exactly 8 meters. So to achieve this, I uh, will go to Document Properties, create a grid, rectangular grid, and make the major grid line every one so we don't have minor grid lines which can be confusing and set the spacing to the width that uh, set spacing of this this grid to 8 pixels so now uh, this the space between the blue lines is the width of the track that we need to match. Uh, let me close this. This will help us to shrink the image to around 8 meters. Now we can verify it that it is around 8 meters. I think I fucked up. Let's check. Uh, let's take the measurement tool and we are interested in units pixels and the width between these points yeah it's 32 pixels that's too much uh, the image needs to be much smaller okay now it's around 8 meters let's shrink it a little bit more uh, take the measurement tool uh, yeah, it's it's more than eight meters. A little bit more. Okay, so we know that uh, we know the width of this track is eight meters. We know that the rest of the track will be. To scale and for now I'm interested only in this part of the track so to uh, have the like the zero point the starting point in uh, like a part of a track I uh, will reduce the opacity and move the point I'm interested in into the zero 
point. This this corner is the zero point of the canvas, and when I spawn a vehicle in a zero point, I want the car to spawn to spawn around this this area. Okay, so now that we have the positions correctly, trace the track. Let's take Bezier. We are going to do it with Bezier curves. And first, we need to disable snapping because if I'll try to create curves now, they will slap, snap to the grid. So let's do this disable snapping and let's go with the with tracing the track here, 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 here. Uh, I feel adventurous. Let's go here and here. So this is uh, th these are the base points for our Bezier curves. Now we are going to select them all, make the uh, nodes smooth, so uh, there are no sharp corners in the in the nodes. And let's try to match the track now. doesn't have to be perfect we will fix the uh, exact width of the track later so just make it pretty close so we have a, a, a decent reference for later okay so now that we have uh, traced the track that we want uh, we want to we will need to change the width of the track. We will have width of around four meters, five four meters. So I've set the stroke width to four. It it uh, as well doesn't have to be perfect. We will fix the width later. And uh, now that we have this, we need to. Now now we have to pretty much convert this path into uh, track boundaries so we'll go path stroke to path we want to adjust the width of the track uh, to precisely what we need so I will reduce the opacity of uh, our trace track and make small adjustments uh, to the width where we need it like here I want the track to be to look closer to what it is actually. And okay, we are done. Now let's select the whole object and let's go back path, break apart, fill, non stroke. And make the stroke one pixel and make sure the opacity is back to 100. Okay, so now this is how our track is going to look like. Well, I think it is a little bit too narrow here. Let's move it a little bit wider. Uh, we will need a cone, cone please harder. So let's make a cone. To make it look better, let's remove, uh, let's add fill, um, remove stroke. So it is, it looks like this. It doesn't have to be as big. And now we need to make the circle into a pattern uh, to make sure the uh, extension that we want to use uh, works correctly. We need to make sure the circle uh, is in the XML editor is below uh, the track boundaries. So here we have both track boundaries. The circle is below. We need to uh, convert the circle to a path. And now uh, select the, the paths. Select with shift, select the circle. Go to extensions, generate from path, pattern along path. 
make it repeated, make it snake. And I think we wanted to use this is space between copies is the space uh, between our cones, but I'm not sure exactly uh, what this um, scale is, but with one it looks pretty fine. And now if we look here, uh, we will have the outside track and if we delete it we'll have our uh, our line of cones and now we select the other path select the circle extensions generate from path pattern or length path again I repeat it snake one apply and we remove the smooth path uh, we want to separate these uh, paths of objects into the paths of paths actually uh, into uh, into individual cones so we are going to create a, a separate layers for each of them we want the layers option layer one we will have inside and outside cones, outside cones. And now we will move the outside cones to the outside layer and the inside cones to the inside layer. Okay, correct. Now we will have, uh, we will take the path uh, with our cones and break it apart. And now we'll have paths of individual cones. Now we, what we can do is uh, here we have like overlapping cones. We can take them, we can select them and delete those that we don't want. Uh, for the outside we need to do path break apart as well. You'll see that the cones fill their their layers so we have still inside and outside layer let's delete this one uh, we will need these cones because they are paths their origin is uh, they, they don't have an origin they are just like lines here you have like a path we want them to have an origin uh, at best in the center so we'll, uh, we need to convert them uh, the, these paths into object. To do that, there is uh, a, a function uh, object uh, pattern and objects to patterns. When we do that, this uh, this path gets converted into an, uh, a rectangle. But we need to do this for all the objects and uh, we ca I don't know any other way than do it do this individually so I'll just go alt uh, alt I and arrow down alt I arrow down alt I arrow down and do this for all the cones quickly and if you'll find a better way please let me know Okay, now we have uh, two layers filled with with circle rectangles, and these are positions of our cones. Great. Uh, now that that is done, uh, we should verify that uh, none of the uh, layers has any transforms that we haven't moved around the whole layers. Because if we do, the track will be will be offset. W will not look like it does in this in this image. Okay, uh, so we can save uh, sa save this file as an Inkscape SVG for for later. Uh, yes, save replace. 
and this what we now saved is uh, like a reference for later if we need to change anything then uh, we can use this saved file and for the export uh, well, you know, if we want to export these cones into something readable by uh, by, by gazebo or some other software we would like to remove the image the placeholder uh, cone and at best even the the one layer too much okay so now that we have this this track you can save it as a plain SVG save okay now that we have done that we will go to uh, to the PowerShell part where we convert this into column positions okay so now that uh, we have the file uh, the exported um, the exported SVG there is a lot of information that we do not actually need uh, for the conversion and that my script doesn't take into account so we'll delete uh, all the SVG properties and the uh, uh, devs definitions uh, which are also not needed the metadata tags also we will not use uh, okay let's leave the open SVG tag then we will want to create two groups so now I know that layer 2 are our inside cones and we want our inside cones inside cones to be our right side cones this is for object detection uh, and close the right side tag and then we want our outside cones to be our left side let's go to the bottom let's close the left tag and now we want to uh, open our uh, open the script point the script to where the location of our svg file is and create a file to, to save to. And now if I run the script, it will convert all the positions from the um, from the SVG into something that is readable by gazebo. Let me open the test XML to show you. Here we have model pose and includes for for the cones. You can edit the script if your cones have a different name or in a different location. You can change that if you need the names to be different. You can also change the names. Okay. Now that we have uh, this, we need to uh, add the beginning and the end tags to make it a, a full world so to do that I will take a world that already exists for example this circuit world I'll take the beginning of it all the uh, SDF world scene the includes of sun and model ground tags place it at the beginning and at the end we need to close uh, our world with world and sdf tags and i will put this stuff in here and save our file with correct name it will be that world make it all files to make sure that it saves correctly save now it's our world uh, we, we can open this world in simulation and it will look correct